Hi, I'm Wendy from Shiny Happy World, and this is the new pattern in the Funny Faces Quilt Block of the Month Club. So when I say new pattern, it is March 15th, 2021, and this is the new pattern in the club. It will be exclusive to the Funny Faces Club until April 15th, and at that point, it, there will be a new, um, a new pattern in the club. So um, after, so say after April 15th, about their first week in May is when you'll be able to find this um, just in the Shiny Happy World shop if you are not a member of the club. So before I show you how to make this bunny, I want to tell you a little bit about this pattern. It's different than my usual pattern. So it's not just this bunny. This is designed so that you can really play with it and make lots and lots of different bunnies. And you will see that. I'm just going to give you a quick look at some of the other bunnies. Um, it has multiple eyebrows and uh, mouth, it, mouth expressions, but it also, I've designed this head and shoulder piece so that you can have tall faces, wide faces, um, skinny bodies, chunky bodies. There's a lot of different ways to play with it. So just here's a quick overview of a couple of them. So this is um, a little bit of an embarrassed bunny with his little embarrassed face and he's got his head, head tipped sideways and much lower on the shoulders. And here is an, a bunny with his face tall and he's got the angry eyebrows and angry mouth. And here's a bunny where I didn't even use the head piece and just made a very short stocky bunny body and he's got a little surprised look going on. So I'm going to show you how to do all of uh, all of that, how to play with this pattern to get a lot of different variations. But before I do that, I like to give just a quick nutshell version of how I do quilt as you go because I do it different than anybody else that I'm aware of, and that makes my blocks, my sample blocks that we'll be working with, look a little different. So the first thing that I do is forget that, don't ignore this applique. I just start with the background square and a square of batting and I quilt the background to the batting. I don't put any backing on it yet at this time. That comes at the end. So I quilt the background square to the batting. This way I don't have to quilt around my face once I get my face on there. So then I applique the face in place. I use applique with fusible adhesive. So the instructions that I'm giving will use that method, but you can use any applique method you like. You can use freezer paper or uh, hand stitching, needle turn applique, whatever you like. But I applique the bunny face in place. And then I do all of the outline stitching around the bunny. So that means that I've been able to, when it's just a single block, I've been able to do all of the stitching that involves a lot of twisting and turning. So all of these tight curves around the mouth, the little stitching around the eyes, the wavy lines that I've done on the quilting pattern, all of that I am able to do when I have just a single block. So the next step is to trim that block down to size. And then I sew all my blocks together and press those seam allowances open because the batting is in the seam allowance. But I use a thin cotton batting, so you really don't get any, uh, any too much bulk in the seams. You do get a little bit of bulk in the seams, but it's not nearly uh, as bad as you would think. So um, press those seam allowances open, and then I layer the backing on and do the final bit of quilting to attach the quilt top to the backing um, just stitching in dit the ditch along the outlines around the blocks. And since the blocks are 10 inches apart, that's all straight line quilting. There's no bending or turning. There's no like maneuvering the entire weight of a full quilt around. You're just going a straight line. It's the easiest kind of quilting to do on a full, full quilt. And I can do a napping size quilt in about half an hour. So I can I can handle maneuvering the entire mass of the quilt through the machine if it's all straight lines and I only have to do it for a half an hour. So then you just bind it uh, like you would any other quilt. So that is the quilting technique that I use in a nutshell. Now I'm gonna show you how to make this particular bunny. Okay, here's the pattern page, all printed out and ready for you to use. 
all of the pieces that you need fit on a single page, but you're gonna see two pages in your pattern. That's because I drew irregular shapes. They are not symmetrical. And so I've given it to you this orientation and also reversed. It just gives you a couple more very subtle variations in your bunnies so that you can make an even larger amount of bunnies and they all look just a little bit different from each other. So print, take, take, pitch, pick the page that you want. It really doesn't matter which one you work with and uh, print it out. Normally I print everything on the heat and bond light and you can definitely print this on the heat and bond light. That um, This is a printable fusible adhesive so you don't have to trace the pieces. But I do recommend on this pattern in particular also printing a single page just on regular paper at the same size. Make sure you're printing it 100%. And this is one that you're gonna use for reference. Since this is a little different kind of pattern, um, this is gonna be really handy to tape up into a window to position your eyes and your mouths if you decide that you want to trace those onto your pattern pieces. Um, and we'll, we'll see that, you'll see that option later on. So if you decide that you're a tracer and not a winger, um, you're gonna to wanna to also have a piece just on regular paper that you can tape into a window and use. So once you get uh, your piece printed out or traced onto the, the fusible adhesive, you're going to cut all of the pieces out roughly and fuse them to the back side of your fabric. And when I say roughly, I mean cut it a little bit on the out, a little bit, uh, leave a little bit of extra white space all around all of the pieces that you cut out. That's going to allow you to get a better fuse later on and a cleaner cut. So we'll come back and talk about cutting those pieces out. For now, just prep all of your pieces and we'll be back with the cutting. Okay, once you've got the piece printed or traced onto the paper side of the paper-backed fusible adhesive, you fused it to the back side of your fabric. Just follow the instructions for whatever brand of fusible adhesive you're using. And the next step is to do what I call the clean cut. And this is when you're cutting it out exactly on that line. And the reason that you do a rough cut first and then a clean cut is right now the adhesive is going right to the edge of the paper. If that had been a clean cut, I'd have to cut right along that edge and hope that I got exactly along the edge. And if I missed it a little bit, I'd have some threads that don't have the adhesive on them. So by doing it this way, the adhesive goes past the edge that I'm going to cut as my clean cut, which means that I know that there is adhesive going all the way to the edge. There's not a thread left uncoated with the adhesive, so I'm not gonna have edges fray and ravel in the wash. So the bunny has a few different parts. He's got two ears, he's got a head, he's got a shoulders, He's got a little muzzle and a mouth, I mean a nose, and two eyes. So you're gonna want all those parts for each bunny, cut them all out, and uh, next up I'm gonna talk about what the heck these crazy dotted lines are for. All right, you've got all of your pieces cut out, but you're probably wondering at this point what these dotted lines are for and where the face is. If you've used any of my patterns before, you know that usually the face is drawn onto these pattern pieces. But this is a mix and match bunnies pattern. I really wanted you to be able to play with it and to get lots of different expressions on your faces and to turn the, the, the head in a lot of different directions, all kinds of variations. So um, I've left the marking of the eyes and things like that for another step. And now I'm just gonna quickly talk about the tools that we use, and then you're gonna see all of this in action in the next video when we're actually putting the pieces together, and I'll show you both ways. So just in a nutshell, here's your pattern piece. So you've got eye and eyebrow sets here, and you've got a few different mouths down in this corner of the pattern. So um, you've got a couple of options, and it all depends on what level of um, improvisation you're comfortable with. So there is no right or wrong answer. It's completely about what makes you happy and what makes you uh, have fun with your projects. So you can take this piece, the face piece, and hold it up to a window and mark with a Sharpie where you want those 
eyes and uh, eyebrows to be. And if you're doing that, these lines, I've given you the center line for whether you're turning your head wide or tall. The, the, um, the basics of drawing say that when a face is looking straight at you, um, you want to have the eyes on that center line. So a lot of people put their eyes up a lot higher than that because we feel like that's, the eyes are in the top half of the head, in the, of the face, but really the eyes are on the center line. So I put these lines in here to help you. Um, if you are holding this up to a window, you can tape this into a window and then hold this up there. And let's say we're doing these angry eyes. You can slide this until you've got, keep the eye on that center line, slide it back and forth until you're happy with where it is, then trace the eye and trace the eyebrow. And then do the same thing on the other side with the other eye and the other eyebrow. So that is one option. And if you're doing that, you can just use, use a plain Sharpie for that. The eyes, the line is not gonna show through the eyes because they're just solid black fabric and you're gonna stitch right over that line of the eyebrows. So the fact that it's a permanent black marker is totally fine. And I have done that option on this, nope, I have an alternate mouth, on this version of the muzzle. So you do the same thing with the mouth. This muzzle piece can be turned in any of these directions. You'll need to decide which direction you want it to be turned. And again, I'll show you that in a minute. You can see the different options. But once you decide, again, if the, with the light shining behind this, you can see these lines right through the fabric. Just lay your piece down on the paper and then trace that line with a Sharpie. Again, it's gonna be, you're gonna stitch right over that. So the fact that it's a permanent black pen is not a problem. You do wanna make sure that you're using something erasable for these center lines. And you'll wanna use the center lines, even if you decide not to mark the eyes and the eyebrows and not to mark the mouth, you might, at least for your first couple, you might wanna mark these center lines just to give you an orientation when you're improvising and putting the eyes and the eyebrows in there on your own. And so I've marked this in chalk, it's just a plain white chalk, and I erase it with just a plain white eraser. If it was a really uh, light fabric that were, you were using and the chalk line doesn't show up, you might wanna use a pencil because you can erase a plain pencil marking off with a white eraser. Don't use the colored eraser on the end of the pencil. Make sure you use a white eraser. That colored eraser, the, the, the pencil lead doesn't leave a smudge, but the eraser does. So that's how you transfer those markings. It's a little bit different my, than my other patterns. And if you're feeling a little bit lost, sit tight in the next pattern. I'm going to show you several different options for how you can put it together. And that's going to show you those markings in action. And then you'll be able to decide which way you prefer to do it. All right, here comes the fun part. Now, assembling it is always the fun part, but on this pattern, Assembling it is super fun because you can make a different bunny every time you make this pattern. I haven't counted up the possible variations. The math on that is beyond me, but there are a kajillion. So the first thing you're gonna do is peel off your paper backing and get this shoulder piece in place. So this is pretty much a set piece. Um, the cut edge on this, you're gonna wanna line up with the bottom raw edge of your block. So you can move it side to side, but you do wanna have that straight edge lined up there. That's pretty much the only piece that there's just one way that it can go. So let's start with the head. So I'm going to make, first of all, a wide-headed bunny. Your first choice is how far up on that neck and shoulders do you want him to go? So this can make him look like he has a more slender neck, but you can put it down much further and make him look like a very chunky little bunny. I'm gonna do that just for now, just to play with him a little bit. And now I'm gonna get some ears into place. And I'm just gonna start off with just an ear on each side of his head. Uh, and I'm going to make them pretty symmetri symmetrical to start with. So you can have them like that. You can make them be a little bit wider. You can make them be straight up on the top. You can make one going up and one going sideways. Play around with the position of the ears. So that's one thing that you can play with. 
So next up, let's get some eyes in place. So we're not gonna worry about the eyebrows right now. I'm just gonna get some eyes on there. So I've got a center line here. I'm not sure if you can see the white chalk line on the light colored fabric. I never know until I'm editing the video how clear that is. But for now, I'm just gonna put these eyes on that center line. And I'm just gonna kind of center them on each half of the, the vertical center line. So I've got now a couple of ears in, a couple of eyes in there. So again, you can play with them. You can make them be closer together. You can make them be even further apart. Um, but I'm going to do just kind of a standard middle-ish. Now you've got the muzzle piece. And I designed this piece so that there is no right way to put it down. So you can put it with any of the pointy sides facing up or you can put it with any of the flat sides facing up and you can put it right up between the eyes if you want that's a very cute look you can make it go a little bit lower down on the face um, both of those are options but whichever way you decide to do it you're going to want to put the nose up near the top of the muzzle near the top so again, we haven't talked about the mouth yet. And if you decided that you wanted to know ahead of time where your mouth is gonna go, or you don't wanna draw the mouth on uh, afterwards, here's one where I pre-drew the mouth in place. So that does determine which side is right side up, but you can still play around with the position. You can make it go very high up on his face or down lower. You've got still some options in there. And you can also turn the nose a little bit. But I'm gonna make the nose go straight up and down. So you can pull those eyes further out and push this up. That's very cute. You can also, let's see, before I do the, the, the really, start getting really crazy here, I'm just gonna show you. So we've got kind of a short, stocky, chunky bunny right there, but here, is what he would look like if you moved him up a little bit on those shoulders. Just gives him a very different body shape. Um, even though it's still essentially a rounded triangle, it looks very different on the finished bunny. So this center line is also gonna help you if you decide to tip the head sideways and you want it to look like he's turned his head in kind of a quizzical way. Um, it's always so cute when animals do that. Then, as long as you keep the eyes on that center line, it's really gonna look like his whole head is tipped and not like you've made him have a really odd shaped head. So if you took the eyes off of the center line, kind of created a new center line, imaginary one on this, then it just makes his head look a little weird, but that's totally fun too. All of these are fun options. You can also, make a very long lean bunny by pulling his head the tall way. And that way gives you a lot more options to play with on where his mouth goes. So where the muzzle goes. Oh, that's awfully cute right there. And so that's the kind of thing as you're playing around with it, you'll just, you'll be playing and playing and playing and you'll be like, oh, that's really cute. So stop there fuse him in place and then make another bunny. So I'm just gonna keep playing with this guy. So let's say you wanna make him not look like he's looking straight ahead. Maybe you're gonna do a whole bunch of bunnies in a quilt and you're gonna make it look very Brady Bunch where a lot of them are looking forward, but a couple of them are looking at their neighbor in another block. So let's do, let's do that with a wide face. And I'm going to Put those eyes still on the center line. Well, actually, I'm gonna tip his head so like he's looking up a little bit. So I'm gonna move his eyes up a little bit off the center line. That's gonna help make him look like he's looking up. And I'm gonna put his nose and mouth underneath him. And the eyes are still in line. So I always do oval eyes and not round eyes because it helps give you some direction. Even with a solid eye, it can give you the illusion that they're looking in a certain direction where if they're round, there's no direction to them at all. So having oval eyes 
and having the eyes still be going perpendicular to the that center line of the of the face helps make it look like the eyes are looking in that direction. So we can still have his ears like this, but you're going to help the illusion if you make his ears go back a little bit. So really, really have fun and play around with this. Um, just, just go to town and keep rearranging the parts until you are at some place that you go, oh, I like that face. Like it says something to you. Then you're gonna take it to the ironing board and fuse it down. So before I do anything else, I wanna show you the eyebrows. So if I had wanted to be really precise about everything, um, I would have drawn the, I would have decided ahead of time where the eyes were gonna go on this face and then drawn in the position of the eyes and the eyebrows before I uh, before I took this off of the off of the paper and started rearranging it, but um, that's not the only way to do it. But the other way does involve drawing on your your face without having a guide to follow. So that can be really really nerve wracking for some people. I draw for a living, and it's kind of nerve wracking for me. So you can do this step though. I'm gonna show it to you just with his eyebrows, but you can also do it with his mouth. If you look at the pattern, these are really, really, really simple shapes and you really can draw them. You just need to be okay with a little bit of uncertainty. You may be doing these um, curves like this that you think is gonna be a smiley bunny, but if you make the curves a little bit steeper or make them a little bit higher, he'll look surprised instead of smiling and you may just have a different bunny than what you planned for. And if you're okay with that, then this kind of technique where you draw it in later is totally your thing. Um, the mouths are just a straight line and then either a curved line, either curving up or curving down or another straight line. You can't go wrong. If you do a straight line and then a, a mouth line, it's going to look like something. It may not look like exactly what you thought it was gonna look like, and it may not look exactly like one of these, but it's going to look like some kind of expression. It's not going to look wrong. So really feel okay with playing around with it. Same thing, all of these are just curves, just like a simple parentheses kind of shape or a straight line, and you can draw those. So the trick is, and, and I say, oh, you can draw those. I actually do when I do the pattern. I redraw those eyebrows 15 times before I get an eyebrow that I'm really happy with. But that's because in a pattern, I'm trying to give you some very deliberate choices. So on this, I'm just gonna draw kind of happy eyebrows. So I'm going for this one. It's a little bit of a parenthesis. It's up off the, kind of up off the corner of the eye and um, the parentheses are going up, not down. These are like sad and anxious kind of eyes. So I'm gonna do parentheses going up and I'm just going to draw it with my Sharpie. The thing is, I do not want to be stitching this without a line to follow because when it's under my machine, I really can't see the whole face. So they didn't end up being the same curve. This one is kind of bent up a little bit more than this one is. That's totally okay. I still think it's a really, really cute expression. You can also leave the eyebrows off completely if you want to, but they do add, like if you're doing a really, really simple face like this where the eyes are just solid black ovals, the eyebrows are one of the ways to give it a real expression and to show it being grumpy or surprised or anxious. Um, all of that comes from the eyebrows. So that was a much longer video than it usually is for putting the bunny together, but I just wanted to show you a few of the tons and tons of possibilities that you have. And then I'm gonna make a total of four sample blocks for this guy and show you some of the different options, finished ones in mind, but I wanted to show you the process that I like to go through. I really don't like to draw it all out ahead of time because I really like that process of playing around with it and just moving the pieces until something sparks. So have fun with that. I'm gonna go fuse this into place and do all of the outline stitching on it, including stitching over those eyebrows and that mouth. And then I'll come back and show you the finished block and the other finished blocks. 
All right, here's that bunny all finished. I'm just gonna walk you really quickly through the outlining that I do. I try to really think about the path of my outlining before I get started, just to minimize the number of times I need to start and stop and tie knots. So I do all, almost all of the stitching, I go three times around each piece. And I do that deliberately because I want it to have kind of a sketchy, uh, sketchbook kind of look to it. So I, I go around three times and I'm not super careful about making sure my lines are going right on top of each other. So you can see in certain places on the design, the, you can see that there are multiple lines and that's exactly what I want. So on this guy, I started going around the head and I started just inside his shoulders here. And I went around the head once to, the first time just kind of establishes the shape of that piece. And then the second time is when I catch all the extra parts. So on the second trip around, I go past the base of the ear and then I go up once, twice, three times to stitch the ear and then I double up across the base. You can't tell the difference between three lines of stitching and four lines. So um, that's a little trick just to avoid tying knots. Continue the second time around here. Again, go past the base of the ear and then once, twice, three times. Continue around the rest of the way around the head. That was the second trip around the head. Now I'm just gonna go one more trip around the head, continue past where I started and then I'm gonna hit this side of the shoulder. So I go one, two, three, and then I just sew along the bottom of the body. I'm actually going into the batting here. That's gonna be cropped off and then sewn into a seam allowance. So you're never gonna see that line. And then once, twice, three times. Tie that knot. Um, around the eyes, I just go once around each eye since it's black stitching on the black applique. You can't see it anyway, so you're not gonna get that sketchy effect. So I just go once around each eye, tie it off, for the eyebrows, I do once, twice, three times and tie that off. Same thing, three times around the muzzle. And then in the nose, I start just on this kind of straight side of the nose. I always like whenever possible to start along a straight edge. So I start along the straight side and I go once around the nose and then I continue past where I started until I get to the bottom tip of that triangle. And then I go down and then I'm gonna do the mouth twice. So I'm actually gonna get four rows of stitching in the mouth. So I've gone down once and then I go over and back and over to this side and then back here, back to this side and back to the center. So that's a total of four rows of stitching on the curve of the mouth. Go back up to the nose. That's the second row of stitching on that little down stroke and then just a quick down and back again and tie it off inside the nose. So that's how you do all the stitching. And I promised I would show you some other variations done with the same pattern. So, so in this one, I've got a bunny that looks, I think he looks a little sheepish, like maybe he's embarrassed about something, he made a mistake, his eyebrows are down, but he's got a little smile. Um, and I've got his head tipped sideways and he's much lower down on his body than the, um, the one that I used as the sample. So you can see he's higher up on his body. And he is much lower down. And then I've got a grumpy bunny, or he, he actually looks downright angry, I think. So I used the angry eyebrows and an angry mouth on him. And also he's a taller, skinnier bunny. And then I really went uh, off, off uh, pattern on this guy. I didn't even use the headpiece. So I forgot to mention in the other video, I deliberately designed the shoulders and body this way so that you could move the head up or down as much as you wanted. And I showed you that when we were doing that uh, layout of him, but I also designed him with a nice gentle curve up here so that you could leave the head off completely. So everything else is the same, but I have left the head off. So this is his head and body, same ears, same muzzle. I used one of the eye pieces for a mouth. So he's got a little mouth sideways. And I just wanted to show you that you can make the eyebrows. This is a much smaller bunny head. And you would think, oh, the eyebrows can't fit. I can't use them. But you can make the eyebrows go up off of the body. You can even make the eyebrows be out in the, um, to carry on out into the background. It just didn't happen to do that with the expression I wanted. I wanted him to look very surprised. So his ears are very upright and he's got that little open mouth and his eyebrows are the parentheses curves are straight over the eyes and curved down. So um, just play around with that. You can use the pieces in other ways as well. 
and then we are back to our original. So that is the new uh, bunny pattern. That's the current pattern for the Funny Faces Club. And I'll be back next month with a new pattern.